Thank you very much. So we're going to call the open session um, of the Economic Development, Tourism, and Event Management meeting to order. Is there any definitions of conflict of interest? Yeah. Yeah. Approval of our agenda? Good. Second? Good. Yeah. All in favor? Approval of our minutes for May 19, 2021. Good. Good. Okay. All in favor? Any business arising out of those minutes? No. Seeing none, we'll move right into discussions and reports. The economic development report, I think you'd said. Oh, I was joking. Oh, I, have, I have a few things. I won't take too much of that. Uh, so between the last meeting and, and, and tonight, um, I was able to meet with uh, some of the downtown businesses just to introduce myself, get an idea of some concerns and issues that they're having. Um, they do have concerns and issues. I won't, I won't go into them specifically, but um, you know, some, some will be able to, to you know, help with, some we won't. Um, but uh, when, I, when I get a better idea from a bigger portion of the businesses, I'll bring it back to the committee to uh, let you know kind of what the businesses are saying. <clears throat> I did get a chance to go and uh, go around the West Royalty, uh, the bio park. Um, wasn't able to get into a lot of the businesses due to COVID uh, issues. And then uh, a lot of the cannabis places have pretty strict protocols on getting in. <clears throat> but I did meet with some businesses and uh, offered my assistance and, and uh, just to get an idea of what goes on in there. Um, I met with the uh, PEI Association of Newcomers, uh, so they're interested in working with the city again to uh, deal with uh, anybody coming into the city for employment um, specifically. Um, and uh, we're going to work on hopefully getting back to some of the events that the city works with them on. Uh, I know the mayor had some uh, things with uh, newcomers and Lieutenant Governor comes and things like that. So we'll, we'll work closely with them to see if we can facilitate that in the fall, depending on what the uh, COVID protocols are then. Um, yesterday, we did finish the Spotlight Series on PEI with Invest in Canada. Um, so we did three different, um, uh, uh, I guess, three different times, times that we know for different times. I'll speak to it more in, in, in the report. Um, and I did get a, uh, an email late in the day from the chamber about uh, their annual awards. Um, so I just wanted maybe a little bit of clarity on, do we continue as we have with the chamber as far as awards and things like that in the past? Or, um, I don't know. I'm just, they were looking to... for, I guess, either uh, people to, to, for awards to nominate people. And then they talked about um, uh, the opportunity to sponsor an award as well. Um, so, I'm not sure if that's been done in the past through the budget. I haven't seen anything about it specifically. Uh, I think so I we've been a partner in the awards for sure. Um, as far as attendance, I would imagine that it's been yeah, done. Yeah, attendance for sure, but I think we've been a standing partner in the actual awards themselves. Okay. I think, Stephen, if you spoke to finance, yeah. asked them to pull any invoices that were paid to, to the chamber, chamber. you would yeah. determine pretty quickly uh, what that was for. And yeah. definitely there'd be a table for sure, I know that. Or half a table, something like that. Yeah. And then uh, have a, a meeting scheduled with the Construction Association of PEI on June 25th to get an idea of uh, the issues with uh, labor force is a big issue that they're having now. And then uh, just housing starts as well. So that's, that's all. That's, well, that's good. Thank you. Any questions? Go ahead, yeah. Ms. Gaspio. Sure. As you indicated, you met with uh, some of the businesses in downtown. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you still have more to meet with. Absolutely. But, uh, with, with the uh, business that you've met thus far, can you give us a, just come maybe a three or four minutes synopsis as to what the issues are? Sure. Uh, the, the ones that kind of boil to the surface specifically are uh, the increases in rent costs for a lot of businesses in the downtown. Um, but the increases in the rent, in the rent that the building owners are charging, oh, okay. business owners. Okay. Um, and uh, I understand there are, there are it, there, there's a way for residential um, renters uh, you can't increase the rent a certain amount over a, a given year, but there's no no such mechanism for commercial. Um, so they were asking about that. I said, you know, I, I don't know what we as a municipality can specifically do there. Um, uh, getting it, that's kind of getting into people's individual business. Uh, so I don't know if we if we have an issue there. Uh, and then there was some some talk about um, uh, newcomers coming and taking advantage of. Uh, Entrepreneur um, uh, 
grants or the opportunity to start a business to gain citizenship. Yeah. Uh, and then in speaking with uh, the Newcomer Association this morning, that was a bit of an issue early on in the process, but from what I understand, they've been able to uh, almost eliminate that from being a possibility um, as the, 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 the program goes on. Um, but there still is some lingering issues as far as a pop-up business would happen, um, and then six months later it would be gone. Um, and, and it just doesn't provide a lot of continuity in the business uh, area in the downtown. So those are some of the issues. I, I, I just want to follow up. So uh, I think the key word there would be retention. Absolutely. You know, retention. So the, the lack of, as you pointed out, the lack of consistency, the lack of continuity, and uh, uh, the whole idea of retention. So I guess the challenge would be um, in, your, in your, you know, your analysis. Uh, what uh, after you do, you do a complete assessment and evaluation, then and how do we strive for retention? How do we uh, work with uh, some of the business owners that are here because of a certain time frame or timeline that they have to comply with, and then. After complying with that, then it's uh, it's off to another destination. I guess the safe way to put it. And, and how do we uh, how do we work collaboratively to avoid that? So there is true retention. Uh, I, I hear the same concerns. I see I see some of that uh, some of those activities, and some of those uh, some 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 of those developments taking place. So. That, that, to my mind, would, uh, would also be uh, further engagement with the problems and effects and how those pro programs unfold and what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, and what can we do to close the gap. So there is true retention. Sure. Yeah, and you know, generally it's programs that are run by different levels of government that we don't have uh, direct access to, but you know, we, we can always lobby government to, uh, to make changes that would be beneficial. And, and like you said, keep some of those businesses in the downtown for the long term. Um, and that, you know, with, with the more businesses that are there, the more people that will come to patronize those businesses. And it helps the adjacent businesses as well. So um, that, that's the idea, is to fill the spots and keep them filled long term. I look forward to your final report. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, oh, sorry, Councilman Cloud, for sure. Actually, uh, um, the president of the Construction Association uh, when you could do meet with him, uh, he did mention to me that he'd be uh, willing to entertain a visit from us uh, to see the training facility that he has. So maybe you would work on, like, mention that, you know, that some of us here in this committee might be. I'll mention that and see yeah, if, if they be, can work out a time that uh, they can extend the council to come and have a look. I think they're pretty proud of that and that they created their own training uh, for the industry. And uh, I think it'd be interesting to see it. It's, 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 yeah. Thank, it's you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Any other questions? Thanks. Okay, thank you, Stephen. We're going to move on to Laura with Tourism and Culture Report. Thank you. Um, so the focus on the Tourism Department since our last meeting has obviously been on uh, primarily on Canada Day. We have now finished filming for our segment for the um, National Evening Program that will air on Canada Day. And our local producers for our creative are just working through some final edits for the national producer. We do have two remaining announcements for our local programming. The first will come uh, within the next 48 hours. Uh, the second, which will include more of the day of programming. Um, we are hoping to get it out early next week. We've just been working with CPHO for the last five or six weeks. So we're just awaiting the final stamp of approval on our plan before we um, put that out to the public. Um, I had an opportunity last night to facilitate the second session of the Canadian Capital Cities Organization Speaker Series, which I know that uh, our chair mentioned during Monday evening's council meeting. Uh, the topic of discussion last night was the Capital Cities role in reconciliation, and the three presenters really did offer some remarkable presentations to the group. Um, I know that our, our chair was able to attend as were um, Wayne and Stephen. That uh, series was recorded last night, so as soon as the um, recording becomes available, I will circulate it to this committee because I do think that 
there is some interesting information to be pulled out of that um, on topics related to events and economic development, as well as collaborative partnerships with First Nations governments. So I will share that with the committee. Um, I recently participated in Discover Charlottetown's review for their most recent ignition fund intake. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail on the projects that were funded as that will start to um, come out in the coming days and weeks, but you we were able to award um, about $95,000 to 28 projects that will be underway between now and the end of September. So some are infrastructure based and you'll start to see some of that pop up. Others are um, tourism and event based. So some really great ideas coming out of the um, local tourism business community. The Gold Cup Parade planning continues for that event. Um, I believe we're all aware that the, the parade has confirmed they will be moving forward in some capacity. The committee does continue to work with public health and my understanding um, from Charlotte, who is the lead on that particular event, is that an announcement is planned for late this week or the beginning of next week with some more details about how that's going to unfold. Um, also, thank you to, to the mayor and to Peter for sharing the information on the Indigenous Studies course um, being offered on the Coursera platform through the University of Alberta. So Charlotte and I are both enrolled in that. We're on week three, so it's been um, it's been interesting and it's really been um, eye-opening. There's a lot of really great information, so if any of you have an opportunity to register and participate in that, uh, there's a free option, there's a minimal cost option, but it's primarily videos and quizzes, so. And good reading. Uh, I've, I've yeah, downloaded really all the good readings. Reading. They're good. Um, <laughs> on the arts and culture front, so the Arts Advisory Board Doug and I have completed um, the RFP for the public art consultant. It has gone out. It closes on July the 5th. So then we'll go through the evaluation process for that and hopefully have uh, a consultant in place um, sometime mid-summer. And also the Charlottetown Festival has opened. Um, I was able to take in the opening of Between Breaths, which is currently playing. It's an amazing show. There are still a few shows left before it ends. Um, so if you haven't had an opportunity, definitely encourage you to grab some tickets and check that one out. Rita McNeil is coming up. Rita McNeil is coming up. Dear Rita starts, I believe, on the 29th of June. So really great season they've been able to pull together. I know the Guild has some really interesting programming coming up as well. So. There'll be lots going on in Charlottetown this summer. Be sure to uh, to check out whatever you can. And with that, that is everything that I have for today. Well, thank you very much. Any questions for Laurel? Could I just add that Doug Demain was also part of the Capital City's presentation last night. He, he was... He sat in on it. Yes, he, he did. did. Mm -hmm. And took a lot of notes, and he's going to follow up on it. So that's great. But could I ask for any any update on the storyboards? I've been speaking yeah, so to our manager down in Public Works. No, so Public Works will begin to story Public Works will begin to remove them. It's we're done. We're ready to go. The first two that are going to come out is the one right here and the one in the Quebec Garden. So we've captured the information on those. We'll be filing it, and they'll be removed, and then we'll move on. So the project is underway. Can you help with the signage too? What signage? Uh, the gateway signage. We're still trying to work on that. Oh, the no. Gateway signage is not the. <laughs> That's not a tourism no. deal. <laughs> that was my last committee. Thank you, though. What's that? Yeah, they've gone for Yeah, They've gone for So you just it'll be done before. Just be, well. before we leave, um, sign share quickly. What about the down? Welcome to downtown signs. They're disparate. Disparate. Yeah. So Mr. Come? Chair, did he not address that? Because I asked him about yeah. that. Yeah. It'd be nice to get the signs up because it has the three languages, you know. Yes. Yeah, so, um, moving forward in this pile. Yeah, and it's under, I, I do know it, it's underway. I don't know exactly to what extent. Yeah, also looking at the He is working on it, yes. Yeah, so it could be the same color as the blue color. It's not being ignored. Yeah. What's that? It's I not, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying they should say be. It hasn't been ignored, and, and uh, I believe they have a, a painter coming on board first week as well to paint poles and all the other that we were talking about there at that meeting. Good. Yeah, for downtown Charlton. So this is, the, this is the welcome to downtown Charlton. Right? Yes. Like yeah. on the corners? Yes. Yeah. There's like six or seven. seven it, right. it, it designates, it designates the, uh, the, the downtown, the, the five-hour yeah. lots. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. All right, Mr. Long, yes. Wayne Long for Event Management Report. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll just go through a few uh, quick items. Um, as the committee has seen, there's been a number of event announcements come out and will continue to come out. Um, most recently, we announced the 2022 Canadian Archery um, Outdoor Championship and the 2024 Canadian Archery 3D Indoor um, Championship. We continue to deal with a shifting uh, schedule of events due to the uh, pandemic, so a lot of those announcements are starting to come soon as well for 22, 23, and uh, 24, which also includes ongoing um, prospecting. Some events, I reported this at last meeting, but we're still very much in the throes of working with all of the summer annual events that would normally happen to ensure there's a path forward for them. And I also reported at our last meeting that there are a number of new events, and you'll start to hear about some of those soon, but there are four or five new summer festivals that will be announced, and with a good portion of them becoming annual events moving forward. So stay tuned um, for those announcements as well. Um, our team um, participated in the FCM virtual annual conference and trade show uh, between May 31st and June the 4th with over 1,000 uh, participants from across the country uh, participating. We had a booth in there, our birthplace uh, booth, um, promoting our destination, especially through with, uh, the recovery of tourism. Uh, there was great pickup, great um, audience, so uh, we were happy to participate in that. And that particular investment was the money we had participated uh, registered to participate last year in Toronto, so we carried it forward to this year, so there's no real new cost to us um, for that. And then uh, we have uh, held our spot for next year, uh, which is in Regina, FCM is in Regina, Saskatchewan, next uh, next year. Um, East Lake Centre falls under um, Councillor Bowie's committee, um, Finance Committee, but just as a point of reference, I participated in the interviews a new GM has been hired for East Link Center. Announcement will be made soon by the board. It's not been publicly announced yet. The individual uh, will be on the ground and working by July uh, 1st, so that announcement is coming. And it will be released again directly through CCCMI, the board of directors. Um, at the Charlottetown Airport, YYG Charlottetown, there are two um, Charlottetown, uh, Welcome to Charlottetown signs, the birthplace of Confederation, one of them is in the main area, it's over the um, luggage belt, you'll see it each and every time. And then in the um, international arrivals um, luggage area, there's one on the wall just as you come in through the main doors. With the new uh, bilingualism rules of the federal government in, in federal funded jurisdiction um, areas, they all have to be bilingual <coughs> signs. So we've worked uh, with the airport to uh, transfer those to bilingual and both now include the birthplace stamp uh, on both of those Charlottetown signs. So once they're complete, I'll bring photos back to the committee or send them to the committee just as, uh, as an FYI. Uh, you heard me talk a lot about Atlant Event Atlantic and uh, the strategy that we're currently working on there that ACOA is funding through Tourism Atlantic. It's coming along nicely, but we were able to secure um, the board and the strategy session here for Charlottetown in July. So we'll pick up uh, 15 to 20 people that will hold that particular event here um, in Charlottetown. And uh, City's proud to host that. And we were one of the original founding partners of the organization. The Canada Games file again is ongoing. As the committee knows, I don't want to spend a lot of time there, but tomorrow there's a news conference that will officially announce uh, our $1.8 million investment into the games. Summerside will also announce their contribution. It's very much quarterbacked by the host society. It will take place uh, in Borden Carlton. The Confederation Bridge is the backdrop, and His Worship uh, will be speaking at that uh, news conference mm -hmm. tomorrow. And then finally, a couple more items that are related to the mayor's office. Uh, the mayor's cup is in uh, the throes of our focus these days. Uh, both Laurel and I and Charlotte, uh, Jill at times, and Doug Dume are involved. Uh, the mayor does come to the meetings, but predominantly to eat. Um, the other uh, thing I would say is the mayor is playing host to the Atlantic Mayor's Congress this coming fall. We've had our first planning uh, meeting uh, with um, the organization uh, with respect to our responsibilities and then we will be meeting as a committee internally in the near future <coughs> to unveil plans uh, for that. So we spoke last uh, week to Mr. Matt Kerrigan. Kerrigan, yeah, and uh, we very much know what we're responsible for, and we're to work on that. Thank you. Good news. Good news. Just for you. Could I just follow up with one thing, Wayne? Um, 
Um, the Atlantic Mayor's Congress, that is mid-September, did you? I, I believe it's October. Okay. I don't have the date in front of me, but I think it's early. I think it's and we're looking at the Delta, right? The yeah, Convention Center. Right. right. And maybe one or two rooms because yeah. of COVID-19 uh, It will be, uh, yeah. Protocols. Yeah. And Mr. They, they want the, uh, the, the goal is, is to be sleep in the same building as you're working at it as well right. to maximize the time on site. So it, it will be in that um, that venue. Yeah. Yeah. And Madam Chair, today I was at the uh, Board of Directors meeting for the Canada Games in Summerside. Um, and I did ask about our situation at the East Link Centre where we've increased our contribution towards the lighting and sound. Um, we're looking for more money from uh, Canada Games. And the budget went up to 18.3 million, mm -hmm. but they have no additional money to help out the city with that additional cost. And um, I know the province has thrown in some more money to help out with Rusty Cove situation with the new rink, because the numbers uh, are going up on a weekly basis. So I don't know where that additional money will come from to help offset what we're doing out at the uh, East Link Center for the, uh, the lighting and the sound system. But I think it's going to be a big plus yeah, for sure. Part of the presentation of the opening ceremonies and the hockey games that will take place there. Squash is in the Trade Center, so it will be a big benefactor. Hopefully, we can find money from some other source, but yeah. they're saying there's nothing here at Canada Games. Yeah, so you worship a couple of things I would say. I mean, as you know, the Finance Committee has already endorsed a resolution yeah. to come to council. Asked. Yeah, and I have a call right now of exchange calls with the COA. With respect to potential, ask there. COA has funded other similar buildings for other projects, so hopefully we can obtain a contribution through there to reduce the city taking on the extra um, load. The games are going to be phenomenal, not only to host but the legacies for us pre-game yeah. hosting, cultural initiatives, and cultural activities. The province has already made their contribution of a half million, and they're waiting for the feds to give their half million or whatever they want to yeah. put towards it. But just one other point, this is something I spoke to Mr. Wayne Lang, Lang about, and this, it, it intersects with public works. Um, we're, we're looking at beautification here in the city. I know we don't have an advisory committee anymore, but is there a possibility or an appetite that some departments can work together in looking at beautification on a citywide basis? Uh, that is, let's say, public works, working with tourism, working with uh, environment sustainability, just staff people, not yeah. look, not looking for uh, yeah. Councillor McLeod, we're not oh. looking for Councillor McLeod or uh, Councillor Tweedle, uh, volunteers from no. the community, it's just an internal body. Is, that's something that I can bring up at yeah. our meetings for public works and environment sustainability. So, and I think uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Kelly might be able to make Come well, on. We're, sorry, I just want to understand what is it you want this community to do because anything that has to be expanded on the last back to the council. So if, if we look at beautification, uh, it's, it's a public works issue, right? It falls on the public works. Falls on the public, right. public works, but we have the Indigenous Guard down on the uh, down at Confederation of Andy. Then we have the Quebec Guard down at the uh, at the Confederation of Andy. These, these issues are not being addressed through public works because public works is responsible for administering or taking care of these gardens. I think we just need some direction from other departments on how we can better address a garden that a lot of people didn't, didn't think existed anymore, the indigenous garden. But it's been very, very much well taken care of and, and we just need to do some upgrades as we did with the Quebec guard. So uh, if I may, yeah. um, I, I think perhaps each manager of each department could probably uh, look at a staff member that could perhaps participate, but would, would the mayor's office have a, um, some paperwork on, on beautification as far as, you know, uh, when they come to town to say judge, what things are looking That's for? That's communities in bloom. Like, yes, we, we have but right. same idea though. Like, yes. Right. That would. Dress but that falls under their department. But that would dress up the city. Yeah. You know, uh, between the, all those files, right? You could have a. a yeah. You know, it could be. Well, one of the benefits of such a committee, I mean, it's, it's up to this committee. You're creating a committee of staff. <coughs> 
oftentimes there's a there's lots of items that come up but they don't really fit somewhere but you can create an inventory of things for committees to consider exactly. in terms of fixing i mean at the end of the day it's a committee decision um, but there are a number of, of things out there from a beautification perspective in the old days it used to be public works and beautification it used to be a beautification committee yeah that was uh, i believe operated here at the office of mayor yeah. and the yes. staff person right that was dedicated to it. that's no longer there because 218 with saw a lot of changes so the changes are still taking effect and i think it's 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 going in the right direction mm -hmm. i think we just need a little more working outside of the silos yeah. so it's certainly worth bringing up each of the committees and uh, <coughs> so we'll, we'll just follow up on that yeah and probably work through environment standards <coughs> which would be uh, ramona or someone in her yeah i want to understand i think that's great thank you okay. <coughs> thank you <coughs> All right, D, Invest in Canada Spotlight, a PEI presentation to Canadian trade delegations. So like I said before, uh, we did uh, three <coughs> presentations yesterday, uh, one for the Americas, one for Europe, and one for the Asian market. Uh, myself, uh, Innovation PEI, and my uh, counterpart in Summerside were the presenters. Um, we, I, I did uh, include the, the slide deck um, of the presentation there. It's in, in the interest of keep saving paper, I didn't put one slide per page, um, but I do have uh, a digital copy of the slide deck if anyone wants it, as well as the uh, the sessions were recorded, uh, so I can send a link uh, to or more video of uh, of the session if, if you'd like to see it. Um, we had about sixty attendees across all three, um, so approximately twenty per, uh, and those were members of the Canadian trade delegations in those areas. Uh, and what we did was we focused on uh, uh, the specific areas of uh, bio, bioscience, uh, information technology, uh, green energy, and aerospace. Um, and basically now uh, we're looking for uh, those trade delegates to uh, you know, work with uh, business in their area uh, to see if there are any um, uh, businesses looking to get a foothold in the North American market. Um, Prince Edward Island is ideally situated between uh, the West Coast and Europe, so you can get a lot done in one business day um, simply by operating out of Atlanta, Canada. So, um, you know, we, we talked about our value proposition in that way, um, and uh, hopefully we'll get uh, some some positive input from, from the spots. If I may, uh, that'd be a nice idea if I had a digital copy, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I can send that out to them. Yeah. 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 That'd be great. For sure. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Laura Lee, your municipal partnership with Japan. I'm going to try that word. Yes, and this actually um, dovetails nicely with what uh, the mayor was just discussing. So, uh, as I'm sure it comes as no surprise to anyone that um, the Charlottetown Ashibetsu Student Cultural Exchange has been officially now cancelled for this year. Um, we were due to welcome another group of students from Japan in the fall, but the uncertainty around when the international border will open, as well as uncertainty around whether um, local families would feel comfortable serving as host, um, host families to those students has led us to um, cancel for the fall. Um, I believe it would have predated this, uh, this committee and even this council, but when we had the opportunity to travel to Ashibetsu in the fall of 2018, we did note that um, there's far more visual representation of our partnership in Japan yeah. than there is in Charlottetown. We don't currently have any visual representation apart from the um, exchange every two years. There's, there's not a lot of recognition that goes on. Um, so staff have been talking um, with the forest and environmental officer about um, redirecting the funding that was budgeted in the tourism departmental budget this year for the exchange, which is $6,000, redirecting it into um, either planting a grove of trees of a Japanese variety or planting um, a traditional Japanese garden somewhere, either in Victoria Park or another high traffic location um, that would would get some visitors and would draw some attention to that partnership. 
this is the 28th year of that municipal partnership, so the other idea would be that when we do welcome a delegation from Japan again um, two years from now, we would dedicate that space and it would represent the 30th year of the partnership. Um, there is a friendship forest in uh, the former Canadian World Park in Ashibetsu, where every Canada Day they do plant two maple trees and they have signage acknowledging that, so it would be a nice tie-in to reciprocate that on this end. So just looking for, um, I guess, for this committee to endorse that we do move forward with a nature-based visual representation of our partnership um, and that cost be expensed to this current operational budget from the line item that would have been dedicated to the exchange. Great. Okay, it's in the budget. It's in the budget. Yeah. Second? Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Good. Just the letter that we're sending uh, the mayor of uh, Ashikatsu will, will modify it to uh, include that we'll be planting the tree because the letter they sent to us, they will be planting the tree in their well, We probably part. shouldn't modify it yet because we need to discuss what we're doing and we're not oh, yeah. going to dedicate no. it for two years. We, so. have, we have a letter to send it. We'll just put it on hold. No, you yeah. can send a letter. Don't no, tell them about the garden. Don't it comes. indicate what we're doing until we know what we're doing. So you could you could let them know next year in your annual letter that we're going to proceed with it and that we'll be dedicating it. Are we planning it this year? I think the discussions are to proceed this year, right. correct? This year. If it's a garden, then the, the planning will be done. It may not be fully ready, but you could indicate that we're we're moving forward with some type of visual representation. There's something to reciprocate what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Madam Thank you. Thank you, Laurel. Any questions? No more questions on that. So now we're going to hear from the bounce back sport hosting. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. This is simply information sharing, and there's no action required from the committee. You've heard me talk before about the Sport Tourism Canada's bouncing back um, recovery strategy for the pandemic. They've essentially carried out a number of surveys um, since then, and it shows that the country's ready for sporting events. You'll see a lot of them popping up across the uh, country now as we get into the fall. It'll be more um, evident that we're ready to move forward again. More than 600 uh, organizations, many municipalities participated in the survey. So I encourage you to read the news release when you have a moment. Great, thank you. Thank you, any yeah. questions for Wayne? Good, thank you, Wayne. 2020 Festival's major event, Spain. Wayne Long again. Yeah, again, Madam Chair, um, information um, sharing there's no further action requires it's the 2020 annual report for festivals and major events um, Canada hopefully you have an opportunity at some point to read it the only quick thing that I would highlight in it um, is the last paragraph in the report uh, which uh, Fame worked very hard to lobby the federal government successfully to secure additional funding for the events industry in Canada uh, 200 million dollars in spending to support major arts and cultural um, festivals and perhaps some of you have noticed uh, just a few weeks ago Lawrence McCauley announced four hundred ninety five thousand dollars for Prince Edward Island from that fund uh, and a COET has engaged uh, Tourism Industry Association of PEI to serve as the administrator for that fund many Charlottetown events have applications into the fund right now you can access um, in the range of excuse me seventy five hundred dollars to up to thirty five thousand dollars so applications are underway there'll be two intakes it's a great news story for uh, events in Prince Edward Island but specifically Charlottetown excellent wonderful thank you any questions for wing we have one added um, late uh, item sorry thank you okay time uh, the art mural and I think Laurel this is you yeah um, so, yes, we received this artwork after the package had been put together, which is why we are providing it after the fact. But um, again, with the city's forest and environmental officer, um, Jessica Corkenball, she's recently partnered with the PEI Association for Newcomers to Canada and has proposed um, a new permanent mural for Robin Hood Park, which I believe has been getting some, um, some upgrades as of late. So there's been a dual-sided mural that's been conceptualized by the um, PI Association for Newcomers to Canada Artists Circle, which is a group of newcomer artists who are being um, led by local artist Kirsty McCollum. So they have conceptualized uh, a mural that one side will focus on island plants and, and animals, and then the other side will focus on the diversity of our people. 
um, the mural itself will almost be drawn like a like a coloring book to start and then those artists will go in and they'll actually fill in the colors and, and the patterns and the designs um, so they've been meeting weekly I believe for the last 10 weeks to conceptualize this there is a uh, some concept drawings provided I don't know if you're printed in color or black and white nice. Black and white. Color. Oh, no, no, color. Jill, you're printed in color. So there is some color palettes in there. The color palettes have actually been pulled from nature. Um, so the Arts Advisory Board did recently review the proposed design, which will just be installed on a 4 by 8 sheet um, of plywood. And they have endorsed the artwork. Um, the cost of the mural itself is going to be primarily funded through the PI Association for Newcomers to Canada. Um, the group was successful in receiving a um, City of Charlottetown Community Sustainability Micro Grant as well. And my understanding is that the Parks and Recreation Department has agreed to do the install and any poster framing that are required for that. It will be treated to withstand the elements that it, as it is intended to be permanent. Um, they would like to start with this uh, in the immediate future if possible. So um, the plan is that it would be installed sometime this summer upon its completion. So today we are looking for this committee to endorse the Arts Advisory Board's recommendation to um, proceed with that mural in Robin Hood Park and then forward our recommendation to council for endorsement. You do it the 21st and 28th? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. So someone move that along? Yeah. I'll move it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Just like to add that uh, our push to be more inclusive, I know what the Arts Council is to look at Indigenous art and indi Indigenous contributions to what we want to present as an inclusive community. Mm -hmm. um, and I also mentioned this before, we do have a pedestrian underpass now underneath St. Peter's Road. Um, we should look at some kind of a mural. It's already been proposed. It is good. Yeah. It'd be nice to see some, <coughs> some indigenous work going down there because uh, <coughs> it connects to nature and it connects to the whole effort to uh, be there inclusive, diverse, and reconciliation. Yeah, I believe uh, I can speak with the CAO. The project, it, it's the province's project. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the artwork itself, um, because the city won't be funding it and it's not city property, it, it doesn't fall to our public art no. policy. So we likely won't have a whole lot of input into what that looks like, but certainly just want to keep I know the that they were communicating with Doug, so I can pass along yeah. that they did want to give consideration to um, possibly some indigenous artwork for, for that mural. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I can definitely take that forward. That is what's on our agenda. Is there any new business? No. Thank you. I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you.